Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Welcome to my channel where my goal is to help you get more from your digital cameras and take better photos. On this channel, I feature tutorials, I share tips and tricks, and do occasional gear reviews as well. So if you're new, please consider subscribing. This is week eight of the Photo Genius Photography Challenge, which is a weekly challenge designed to help you take better photos, get more from your cameras and try out new techniques all while staying safe during these testing times. It's been an amazing few weeks and if you've missed out on the previous challenges, you can go back and try them. I'll put details in the Photo Genius website. You'll find a link below this video. So the theme for this week's challenge is macro photography. So I'm asking you to take close up detailed photos of subjects that you can find around your house or maybe in your garden. The hashtag for this week is PG week nine. So if you are sharing your images to social media, please use the hashtag that way I and others can see your images. Now, if you're thinking, hang on a minute, I haven't got a macro lens and therefore I can't take part, don't worry, because as usual, I've got some cool tips and tricks to share with you guys so everybody can take part in this week's challenge and take photos like these. So macro is the common term for taking photos of things close up and in particular capturing detail that we can't see with our own eyes. For this week's challenge, you're ideally gonna want a DSLR camera or mirrorless camera with a removable lens, but you can also take part if you've got a bridge camera or even a smartphone. So of course, if you own a macro lens already, you're definitely gonna to wanna to use it for this week's challenge, but I appreciate that many of you watching this video won't have a macro lens, but don't worry because in a couple of minutes, I wanna share with you a really cool hack where you can effectively take a standard lens and turn it into a macro lens. But before we get there, I just wanna mention extension tubes because some of you are gonna really love this challenge and you're gonna to want to get into macro photography, but macro lenses, at least the good ones, can be very expensive. So about two years ago I brought this. This is a set of extension tubes for a Canon camera and these effectively allow you to use standard lenses attached to these and get amazing macro results. I liked using these so much that I bought a second set to fit Nikon cameras as well and I use them both. They are really good. This image you're seeing here was shot with a standard Canon lens and a standard Canon camera using the extension tubes. So here is a set of extension tubes. These particular ones are made by a company called Kenko and it's a set of three. There's a 12 millimeter, 20 millimeter and 36 millimeter tube. And if I start by removing one of the tubes, you'll see that they do look a bit like small lenses, but unlike a lens, there's no glass. And you'll see that these particular tubes also have the necessary gold connectors, which means that when attached to the camera, things like autofocus and aperture will work. So now let's remove the lens and pop the tube on. So the tube goes straight onto the camera body. And once that's firmly attached, all you do is attach the lens to the tube. What this effectively does is extend the focal length for the lens, which in turn magnifies the image so you can do macro photography. Now, if you want to, you can add another extension tube. You can stack them together or use them individually. So what do you do if you don't own a macro lens or a set of extension tubes like these? How do you get involved with the challenge? Well, I'm now gonna show you how to do the reverse lens macro technique. Now, this might sound a bit weird, but what we're actually gonna be doing here is we're gonna be taking the lens off the camera, reversing it, placing it back up against the body of the camera and taking a picture. Now this technique is old, it's tried and tested, it works, but it's very, very fiddly. Let me tell you more. So I'm gonna begin by setting the camera up. I'm gonna dial in ISO 400, and I'm also gonna decrease the shutter speed to one one hundredth of a second, which is a good place to begin. Now with the shutter speed and the ISO set, I'm gonna now reach around to the front of the camera take the lens off the camera body and reverse it. Now, as I do this, because the camera and lens can't communicate anymore, you will see the letters MF appearing on the back of the camera for manual focus. And also you'll see that the aperture isn't working, hence F0. So whilst we can adjust the shutter speed and the ISO, we cannot adjust the aperture because it no longer works. 
Now to preview our image, all we've got to do is press the live view button and we see our image which currently is very blurry. Now with this type of photography, you don't normally um, adjust the focus in the traditional sense. All you do is move the camera. So if you slide the camera closer or move it further away from the subject, you should see the subject go in and out of focus. Now, of course, if you want to be really spot on with your focus, you can use the digital zoom technique. And this allows you to be really spot on and very specific about your focusing if you wish. But that is pretty much it. Now, of course, you can also adjust the exposure. So if you dial to the left here, we slow the shutter down. We let more light into the camera, dial into the right to decrease the exposure. So you can still adjust the exposure as normal. And that's how to do a reverse lens macro shot. Now, if you're using a Nikon camera, then be aware that when you remove the lens, the aperture will be closed right down. But there is a lever on the back of the lens that when you adjust, allows you to open the aperture up wider and let more light through the lens. So this makes things quite fiddly, to be honest. But what you've got to do is hold the uh, lens onto the front of the camera body and just reach around to the front of the lens and adjust the aperture via the switch. It is very fiddly, but it works a treat. And just like the Canon camera or any other camera to focus, all you need to do is move the camera closer or further away from the subject. Now clearly what makes this technique tricky and fiddly is trying to hold the lens up against the camera body. Uh, the tiniest movement can throw your subject out of focus. So expect some dodgy photos along with some good photos. Be persistent with this one because it will pay off in the end. You can buy adapters that attach to the camera and allow you to then screw the lens onto the front of the camera backwards. They're called macro reverse adapters. Um, I'll put some details in the links below this video when you're buying them just make sure that you check out what the uh, filter size is on the front of your lens this particular Canon lens is uh, 58 millimeters and then of course you make sure you buy one to fit a Canon camera it's pretty straightforward again more details in the links below now, if your camera is a bridge camera, then of course you can't remove the lens. So you won't be able to try this technique out, but that doesn't stop you guys from getting great macro photos because bridge cameras and compact cameras have a macro setting. And when you turn this on, you'll be able to get really close to the subject. Because of the way bridge cameras and smaller cameras are designed and because they use smaller sensors, a bit like smartphones, you can get really close to the subject. And I have seen some amazing macro photos taken with bridge cameras. So if you have got a smaller camera, bridge camera, or even a smartphone. There's no reason why you guys can't get involved in this week's challenge as well. Now, I do love macro photography. It's certainly a lot of fun doing, but I'm not going to lie. It's also very tricky, especially in terms of focusing. So do be persistent with this one. Expect lots of blurry photos. But when you finally nail that shot, it really does feel great. Things you can do to help yourselves if you can. And if you've got one, use a tripod to keep the camera steady and shoot where the light is good. So maybe set yourself up against a nice big window. Um, also, and you won't hear me say this very often, consider using the pop-up flash. I'm not a big fan of the flash built into the cameras, but that extra burst of light can really help. And of course, if you get a great photo and you share it to social media, make sure you use the hashtag PGWeek8 because I'd love to see your photos and without the hashtag, I can't find them. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's challenge video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and leave comments, suggestions and questions down below. Stay safe, stay well. I'll see you next week for week nine. See ya, bye.